Hello, ladies and gents! Just as beginning of last year, it's time once again to have a look at the strongest tanks in the game to see what they change in a year and also to see if you should maybe give a couple of new lines a go. Now, once again, the primary unit of measurement will be the average win percentage as displayed on vbedic.net, the go-to place for World of Tanks statistics. Now, just as last year, we will be comparing the results separate for regular and premium tanks, focusing only on Tier 5 to Tier 10, including only tanks with at least 1000 battles over the last 30 days, which will help us to exclude some of the really overpowered super rare tanks that could muddy up the picture. For the same reason, we did also exclude any Clan Wars reward tanks, plus the top 2 mission reward tanks as well, aka the T55A and the Object 260 which will be for the most part owned by only the most skillful of players, thus naturally affecting their average win rate as well. Now, another quick point that's worth making is that the statistics found on the website will of course change daily, as it's a rolling average of the last 30 days, so don't take these numbers too seriously. I took down these numbers a couple of days into 2018, so if you log in now and run the same reports, the numbers will be somewhat different for you. I think the numbers are still a good general indication, however, of what's going on behind the curtains, so use them as such. And with that said, let's jump right into it, and let me tell you, every class will have its own set of surprises. Kicking things off with the regular light tanks, it might surprise you that despite the general light tank rebalancing done during 2017, this is actually the class that did see almost no change to their general win rate year on year. In fact, not only the overall numbers of the top 3 tanks are almost identical with around 51% average win rate, but both the WZ132 and the WZ131 did manage to stay in the top 3 despite all the changes, with only the T54 lightweight falling off and being replaced by the T5 Leopard. By the way, a very close fourth in the race was the Tier 10 T100 LT, which is definitely worth a look as well. Moving over to the premium section, we see a much more dramatic change, and no, the newly introduced T92 light tank didn't get included in the top league. Now, due to the limited choice of premium light tanks, the actual winners did stay the same. So, just as last year, we have the Type 62, the Type 64, and the EMX 1357 Grand Finals Edition occupying the top spots. However, the global win rate did go up considerably for all of them. And this is no wonder either. The premium light tanks didn't get rebalanced when their matchmaking tiers were reduced, so they basically received a flat out buff. The number one winner of the lighting changes was without doubt the AMX 1357 Grand Finals, which catapulted itself to the first spot for 2017, finishing the year with a very impressive over 55% average wins, especially if we consider that a year ago it was only 51%. Now, this is a win rate that could easily be already considered to be overpowered, so I don't expect to see a lot of sales time for this machine in the upcoming year. But, if they do a flash sale on it, this one might be worth a second look as well. Jumping over to what many would consider the heart and soul of the game, the regular medium tanks, the picture did change completely. First of all, as I'm sure many of you have already noticed, there is actually a distinct drop in terms of average win rate between the strongest medium tanks year on year, bringing the best performers to around 51-52% to instead of the 53-54% to from a year ago. Now, I think we can safely say that this is part of the changing meta, that did take away some of the edge of the previously really dominant medium class, without leaving it in a really tough spot. As for the actual tanks, 2016 was all about the chair autoloaders without question. As for the Leo on the list, I think we can safely ignore it. I simply shouldn't have included the by the newly introduced Swedish tanks in last year's results. Now, while the TVPT 5051 did fall off, I'm guessing partially because of the large amount of heavy armor introduced to the higher tiers, the tier 9 Skoda T50 remains in the top 3 with a very respectable average win of 51.5%. On the top spot this time around, we have the AMX 31st prototype with close to 52% average wins, which I'm sure not a lot of people would have guessed a year ago. 
So, if you avoided this line until now, perhaps now would be a great time to check it out. The third tank on the top list is a bit of an oddity, the Object 432. I'm going to take a wild guess here that this tank did see increased activity because of the planned changes to the line, so the results could be very well influenced by this. I honestly don't think this tank is that good. Changing to the premium sites, there are drastic changes here as well, together with a very similar overall win rate drop of 1-2% compared to last year. The good old Cromwell B, aka the Bromwell, is still going strong in the top 3, which surprises probably no one. However, the others just might do the trick. I personally never would have guessed, but the Polish Poodle is actually performing really well out there, with about 53.5% average wins, as is the T44-100, which at this moment is not only the third best performing premium medium tank overall, tier 5 and up, but it's also the best performing tier 8 medium at the moment. Truth be told, most of the tier 8 mediums are performing pretty closely in terms of average performance, but I would not have put my money on this one for sure. Now I mentioned already that we won't include the reward tanks in this comparison for obvious reasons, and indeed, a lot of them would be boosting scores of around 55-56% to average wins, which is fine if you think about who are playing them. There is, however, one reward tank that really sticks out, and that's the coveted Object 907. Now, this crazy beast boosts an absolutely ridiculous 59.12% average wins, which is quite frankly over the top, even for a top tier reward tank and no other similar tank is even near this ratio. People have called this tank overpowered for a long time now, and if I'm not mistaken it actually got buffed in 2017, and well, you can certainly see the reason why people would call it OP. And before you say that that's a small numbers problem because it's a reward tank, trust me, this thing gets played a lot. Now let's change class once again to something that's probably improving results year on year in the current meta, but unfortunately we won't be able to see it in this comparison because I'm a moron and I included the back then brand new Swedish autoloading heavy tanks in the 2016 top list. Yeah, big mistake. Naturally those crazy numbers that you see in this comparison for the Swedish autoloaders did fall off and normalize in the meantime now that a large portion of the player pool has unlocked and played them. And that's exactly the reason why we won't include the newly added French heavy tanks in the 2017 top list. Same old story, the AMX MLE 51 and 54 would destroy their competition at this very moment, but we have to keep in mind that not many people have played them at this early stage. We'll just have to wait a few more months before we can have a tangible result for these bad boys. Sticking with what's real then, here are the top 3 regular heavy tanks by win rate for 2017, and oh boy, it's that dastardly Type 5 heavy in the top spot. I know a lot of you out there are not a huge fan of these high tier derp fortresses, and one can certainly see why. Having a KV2 style troll gun and a ton of armor is probably a bit too much of both worlds. But let's see what will happen. At least it's not the same type of crazy OP nonsense that we had with the mouse during the year. There is one very important thing we can notice here, however, if we have a look at the second and third spot, the WZ11114 and the 1115A. High tier heavy tanks have made a huge comeback generally lately, and especially the Chinese line is out there kicking some serious ass. The win rates are not terribly out of line either, although certainly respectable, so all in all if you fancy trying your luck out with some of these steel beasts, this list might give you a couple of ideas what to grind towards to these days. Moving over to premium heavy tank territory, once again we see that the win rates did overall drop year on year in the top 3, although one could argue that they are still a little bit too high. The dastardly KV-222 is still the king of seal clubbing down in the mid-tiers, despite losing a massive 5% in average win rate year on year. The second one is the much loved and hated Object 252U, which is still going strong with close to 54% average wins, aka don't expect it in the premium shop anytime soon still. 
followed by another Chinese contender, the WZ111. Plenty of really cool premium tank options out there these days, apart from these three as well. But if you want the naughtiest of the bunch, now you know who to look out for. It's time to move on to the tank destroyers then. And no, your eyes did not deceive you. That right there in the top spot for the regular tank destroyers is the T95, the now buffed, slow, non threaded mobile bunker with an over 53% average win ratio as of late. Armor is back in style, baby! How things change. Last year the Swedes dominated it all and yes, they shouldn't have been included in the first place. This year, however, the list is full with surprises. Not only is the T95 the tank destroyer with the highest average win ratio, the other two top spots are actually occupied by two members of the unpopular Chinese tank destroyer line, featuring the Tier 9 WZ111GFT and the nifty little T34 2GFT. Is it worth reconsidering grinding that line after all? Well, the playstyle still isn't that exciting, but the results are certainly respectable. And yes, we might actually look at here at an early adopter's problem regarding the numbers, but since the line has been out there for a while now, I thought it's just fair to include them in the list. Are you on a different opinion? Let me know in the comments. Oh, so Chinese bias, am I right? As for premium tank destroyers, the T28 concept and the SU-85i are still up there and rocking. And I know, I know, the T28 HTC is a reward tank as well. But I think considering how many people got the first two tiers of mission rewards at this stage, I think it's just fine to include it as well. Now the third premium tank destroyer on the list is everyone's favorite public enemy number one, the E25, which did see a jump in popularity after the latest flash sale during the winter holidays. Might be interesting to see if the average win rate wields away after a while, not that 52.5% would be that incredibly horrendous. Should the tank destroyer be the way it is? I mean, probably not, but I still just don't buy into the E25 apocalypse. Oh, and by the way, a point that's probably worth making is that at the end of the day, the tank destroyer class did see a distinct increase in the overall win rate compared to 2016, and it's actually now the class with the highest average win rate among their top performing tanks. Tank destroyer meta in the house. Last but not least, let's have a really quick look at the SPGs as well. Another class that did see a major overhaul in 2017, which also brought down their average win rates. The Bishop managed to keep the top spot year on year. Otherwise though, I think we can safely say that there was a big change in artillery meta. They did see a lot of the heavy hitters gain momentum compared to before. Right now the high tier German and US lines seem to be favored a lot which is also represented here with the GW Panther and the M4043. And nope, we won't have a look at the premium SPGs because it's rather difficult to make a top 3 list with 2 entries alone. So, this is it. All in all, quite interesting developments compared to last year, I would say. It was very interesting to see that the recent changes brought the different classes much closer to each other in terms of average win rate at least regarding their top performers anyway, giving you now viable option to get out there and kick some butt regardless of your preferred playstyle. I'm quite sure that this was actually part of Wargaming's plan all along with the changes, and they did quite well in this regard, I think. I was also surprised to see the Chinese line so heavily represented in the top list in all classes that's available for this nation. Especially the heavy tanks seem to be in style these days, which is certainly something to look out for. Right, this was then the yearly look at what's hot right now in World of Tanks. I hope you did like this little comparison. If you did, thanks a lot for dropping this like. And if you hated it, the dislike button is right there as well, if you are still listening for some reason. Now, however, it's time for our favorite pastime, the comment section bingo. Comments about how this list is stupid because they personally have a different win rate in a certain tank? Check. Referencing a tank that's outside of the scope of this video? Check. Generic comment about stupid overpowered tanks? Check. 36 different first comments with obligatory get-alive responses? Check. 
Bingo! See you next time.